Hi, I'm Larry with Smoking in the Dark. I'm here at Countryside Barbecue Pro Shop in Springfield, Missouri, and today we're gonna cook a spatchcock turkey. Now, what is a spatchcock turkey? Think of it as a butterfly turkey. Um, what we'll do is we'll take the bird and cut the backbone out, and then we'll make a couple of other incisions. We'll cut through the pulley bone. We'll kind of split the, that breast bone, that keel bone, so that will help it to lay flat. Now, now that we've got it flattened, we're actually going to brine this turkey. And Brett brined the turkey. I, we, we cut the back out on this one yesterday. And Brett brined it last night in Oak Ridge Barbecue's Game Changer Brine and Injection. Now, a brine's going to help that turkey to stay nice and moist. Because a lot of you know that a turkey breast is gonna dry out pretty easily. A brine will greatly enhance the juiciness of that breast. I always like to put some kind of oil on the skin of a turkey to help hold on the seasoning when you first put it on the grill. And today we're gonna to use Butcher Barbecue Grilling Oil. This is a butter flavor. And since Smoking in the Dark is here today, we're gonna to use Smoking in the Dark Medium Rub. Now this is one of our rubs that's just a little bit sweeter and it'll go great on turkey. We're going to be cooking on a Kamado Joe, Big Joe, from here at Countryside Barbecue. Uh, we're gonna cook somewhere between 350, 375, and we're gonna use apple wood for our smoke. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and grab the turkey, and we're gonna put it on. Okay, so we're just gonna take the bird. You hear that sizzle? That's probably a little bit different than what you're used to whenever you think about putting a turkey on the grill. I have smoked them as low as 225, and I've cooked them as high as 450. And I think that uh, somewhere between 350 and 375, you're not really smoking. You're really basically grilling. So we wanna have a really moist bird. We're gonna put this on, and here back in a few minutes, I'm gonna come out and we're gonna stick some remote thermometers in. Okay, we're about an hour 30 minutes into the cook and the breast of this turkey is already at about 145 degrees. We're almost there. I'm gonna cook this to about 160 degrees internal, and then we're gonna pull it and rest it. Check back on it here in just a few minutes. Okay, so it should be about done. We're playing with two remote thermometers uh, on this, so we can uh, test both the ambient temperature of the uh, grate as well as the internal temperature of the breast. But just to double check, I want to take an instant read pen thermometer because they're about as accurate as it gets. And we're at one, about 155 in the breast. And I'm going to call that good because when we pull it and let it rest, it's going to go ahead and rise another five to 10 degrees. And then we'll, uh, after we let it rest, we'll slice it up. Okay, so after about an hour and 45 minutes, we've got a turkey that's done. And I'm just gonna cut into it here, and I'm gonna cut around the keel bone, and take a wing off. Okay, so when you cut your turkey, you wanna make sure that you part it off the bone and slice across the grain, like you would with a steak or a brisket, so that you retain more moisture when you do that. And the camera is probably not going to show, but this breast is absolutely almost like a sponge full of water. And that's what brining will do, as well as cooking at a higher temperature. So I'm not going to do the uh, normal taste test where I put the camera back on me, but I'm going to do this and I'm going to tell you, oh, that's good stuff. I've got a shop full of people that want to eat. Okay, come eat.